In the last three sections of My Antonia, <clears throat> we follow Jim as he leaves town, uh, pursues his academic career, and eventually he loses touch with the people in the town of Blackhawk uh, that he's grown up with. And so these last three sections almost read kind of like a long epilogue to parts one and two. And I think that's intentional on Cather's part. Uh, one of the big themes of this book has been that of nostalgia and the modern day Jim's relation to his childhood. Remember, the whole story's been set up as this sort of frame narrative where modern day Jim is looking back on and relating all of these things to his audience. So it makes sense that once his childhood is over, once he starts to grow up in his own story, uh, that things are going to wind up and uh, catch up pretty quickly uh, to the time in which he's writing it. We do get to read about the fate of many of the minor characters, though. Uh, the other hired girls, uh, Lena and Tiny, uh, they end up doing pretty well for themselves financially. Uh, they both leave Blackhawk and strike it rich elsewhere. And this might be a bit surprising to readers, uh, as it seems to be uh, to Jim and some of the other characters as well. It was predicted by many in Blackhawk uh, that because of their carefree, sort of irresponsible attitudes towards men and towards decorum, uh, that these girls were going to end up in some sort of a tragic situation. But it's actually Antonia who tragedy strikes. We find out that Larry Donovan, uh, the railroad man uh, that Antonia had been seeing, abandons her after promising to marry her, and she's left to raise his child on her own. And this comes as a real disappointment, uh, not just to her, obviously, but uh, to the people she knows and that she cares about, too. And it seems strange that Jim uh, is not just disappointed for her, but it seems that he's even disappointed in her, too. And I mean, after all, it doesn't seem like things were entirely Antonia's fault. Uh, she couldn't control the fact that this guy ran away on her. Uh, but he explains his feelings uh, like this at the beginning of book uh, four. He says, Poor Antonia. Everyone would be saying that now, I thought bitterly. Uh, I tried to shut Antonia out of my mind. I was bitterly disappointed in her. I could not forgive her for becoming an object of pity, while Lena Lingard, for whom people had always foretold trouble, was now the leading dressmaker of Lincoln, much respected in Black Hawk. Lena gave her heart away when she felt like it, but she kept her head for her business and had got on in the world. Uh, just then it was the fashion to speak indulgently of Lena and... So, and uh, uh, severely of Tiny Soderball, who had gone quietly west uh, to try her fortune the year before. So he goes on to uh, talk about uh, the rumors that are circulating in town about the different girls that everybody had gossiped about before. Uh, but back to Antonia. So his disappointment in her comes from the previous feeling of pride that he'd had in, in her. Uh, he liked hearing about how she was admired uh, by the townspeople. And now he's annoyed that she's only ever going to be seen as an object of pity. Uh, it's almost like he's annoyed at her for her own sake. Uh, and even years later, uh, when he revisits uh, to find Antonia married with dozens of kids, uh, still living on a farm, well, not dozens, but about a dozen kids, uh, she's still living on a farm on the outskirts of Hastings, Nebraska, not far from Black Hawk. Uh, even then, there's a sense that uh, Jim has that she somehow missed out on life, uh, that she's fallen into obscurity in Nebraska when she really could have done so much more, uh, so much better for herself. And we even get the sense that Jim's a little bit afraid to visit her again, almost as if a, a visit will ruin the idealized image that he has of her in his mind from childhood uh, before, sh before tragedy struck. But the vision that we get of Antonia uh, through Jim's eyes, it's far from depressing. Uh, she seems very happy uh, with her family and with her husband, 
and even though Jim was expecting the worst when he went to visit her, uh, he finds that she's still the same Antonia uh, that he's always loved. Uh, he says, She lent herself to immemorial human attitudes, which we recognize by instinct as universal and true. I had not been mistaken. She was a battered woman now, not a lovely girl, but she still had that something which fires the imagination, could still stop one's breath for a moment by a look or gesture that somehow revealed the meaning in common things. She had only to stand in the orchard, to put her hand on a little crab tree and look up at the apples, to make you feel the goodness of planting and tending and harvesting at last. All the strong things of her heart came out in her body that had been so tireless in serving generous emotions. It was no wonder that her sons stood tall and straight. She was a rich mine of life like the founders of early races. Now, uh, we might question from descriptions like this uh, whether or not this is a good thing. But it seems like Jim is still idolizing her uh, rather than seeing her as a fellow human being. Uh, but then again, you know, I would say that she stands in relation to him in the way that maybe we could say, if you've read it, uh, that Beatrice stands in relation to Dante in the Divine Comedy. She evokes these transcendent feelings that are both love and something more of, more than love out of him. Remember back in the beginning of the novel, uh, in the introduction, Jim seems to conflate his memories of Antonia with his memories of life on the prairie, uh, as if uh, to think of the one is to think of the other. And now, from this description, we can see how that is. Uh, Antonia is a rich mine of life. Uh, in the same way that we read about the prairie uh, being not a country, but the stuff out of which a country is formed back in the earlier chapters. Uh, the idea of fertility and of creation and of endless possibilities unites them both. And that's not necessarily a wasted life. Uh, we can compare where Antonia ends up uh, to that of where Lena Lingard ends up, who doesn't want to have a family, uh, she doesn't want a husband, and she assures Jim and us that she's going to be perfectly happy with that future. Uh, she wants to be a successful businesswoman so that she can support uh, her mother and her siblings. And it seems that she succeeds in this. She's materially successful. Uh, she's well off clear to the end of the book. But I don't think that the, that the vision that we get of her... Uh, rooming with her other wealthy friend, Tiny, in San Francisco, uh, is quite as appealing as Antonia, surrounded by her children and by her loving husband. And finally, I think that in these last few chapters, we're able to define Jim and Antonia's relationship a little bit better. Uh, there isn't a sense of jealousy between Jim and Antonia's husband. We don't get the impression uh, that he's living, uh, that Jim's living with a lot of regret, uh, that maybe he's uh, thinking he's missed his opportunity to be with her. It's not really a sad ending at all. He admits to her children uh, that he was in love with her, uh, but they don't seem shocked or view him as any sort of a threat because of this. It's almost like Yes, in the past, Jim did have romantic feelings towards Antonia, but now life has put a boundary between, between them uh, that, makes it that makes it possible for him to express these feelings without them being uh, problematic or in any way dangerous. So he still feels close to Antonia, but she's cut off from him. Uh, in a way, uh, he can only look at her as a vision of the past just in the same way that he still feels close to his childhood home on the prairie. Uh, he carries that memory with him. He carries the memories of the people he met on the prairies with him as he goes about his life as a lawyer uh, over the country. Uh, they're still close to him, but he's still disconnected from them. And so going back to this idea of this being a novel of nostalgia, uh, these last few chapters seem to give Jim a kind of a glimpse of what could have been, uh, but not in a way that feels depressed, uh, uh, depressing or that upsets Jim uh, with how his own life has turned out. 
So uh, that will be it for our discussion of my Antonia and of Willa Cather. Uh, she wrote many other novels, many other short stories. So if you enjoyed this book, uh, check out her other ones. Uh, next week, we're going to begin talking about F. Scott Fitzgerald and reading three short stories from him. Uh, so check those out on the syllabus and I will see you next time.